In this video, we provide the solution to question number eight from practice exam number two for math 1210. And we're asked to find the largest number delta possible such that when the absolute value of x plus one is between zero and delta, that'll guarantee that the absolute value of three minus four x minus seven is less than one fourth. So this is an epsilon delta type question. Let's make sure we can label all the appropriate parts right here. So this is our function in play right here, three minus three minus four x, that is our function f of x. It's our y coordinate there. This number seven is the limit, uh, which we call L, and this one fourth is our epsilon. Delta is what we have to find. Um, this one right here, we might want to rewrite x plus one as x minus a negative one, for which we then identify that a is our value of negative one. So we want to know uh, in a symmetric manner, how much to the left or right of negative one should we be to guarantee that our function is within one fourth away from seven right here. So if we want to solve this algebraically, that would be very appropriate. We have to solve, we have to solve the equation f of x equals L plus or minus epsilon. There's two equations right there. So one of them, we three minus four X is equal to seven plus, instead of one fourth, I'm gonna put it as a decimal 0.25, like so. I mean, you could leave it as a fraction if you want to, whichever you prefer. Uh, it doesn't make much of a difference, honestly. As the answers are given in fractions, it's probably best to keep it as a fraction. So we're gonna have three minus four X is equal to, well, with seven, we might have to write it as 28 fourths. And so we end up with 29 fourths right here. Uh, let's subtract three from both sides. We're going to get negative four X is equal to, if we take, uh, if we take three, uh, that can be written as 12 fourths. And so that would then become subtracting 12 fourths from 29 fourths. We can write that there, minus three here, minus 12 fourths right there. That'll end up with a 17 fourths. In which case then, if we divide both sides by negative four, we end up with X is equal to negative 17 over 16. So that's one of the values we need to keep track of. This is our so-called A1. Uh, we have to also do the other equation, three minus four X is equal to seven minus a fourth, which that's gonna become 27 fourths. We still are gonna subtract three from both sides, which will then translate to become a 12 fourths right there. This gives us that negative four X is then equal to subtracting the 12, we're gonna get 15 fourths for which then when we divide here by negative four again, we're gonna get X equals negative 15 sixteenths, which is our A2. And so then delta, as you'll recall, delta is gonna be the minimum, whoops. It's the minimum of the absolute value of A minus A1 with the absolute value of A minus A2, like so. For which if we subtract if we subtract a1 from our a value, which is negative one, you're gonna end up with a 1 16th, like so. Um, if you do a2 minus a1, or minus a, excuse me, you're gonna get also 1 16th. Again, we're taking absolute values, so this thing's gonna be positive. And so they're actually both the same, and so we end up with 1 16th, and that's gonna be our delta value, which then makes the correct answer B. Now that's sort of like the long drawn out way you can do this one, that's gonna work for general functions that you could see here. Now, some variants I want to mention here is that the function itself might actually be given to you in graphical form, in which case that basically tells us that the A1 and A2 are probably already given to you. That simplifies a lot of this process because we don't have to solve the equation in that one. So if you're given a graph, you know, scream hallelujah because that makes this question a whole lot easier for us. Another thing I want to mention to us is that since our function here is linear, there's a nice little shortcut here that if you're ever given if you're given epsilon and you wanna find delta, delta is just gonna equal epsilon divided by the absolute value of the slope. That is to say, in this one, we have one fourth divided by the slope of the line, which is negative one fourth there. Um, so we end up with one sixteenth. This, this is characteristic of lines, that to find the delta for a line, you just take epsilon and divide it by the slope, taking absolute values. That only works for linear functions like y equals three minus four x, but that's something we could have applied in this one to dramatically simplify the process.